All right, guys, we're here. You made it. This is exciting. We are actually able to start using this calculator now that you've taken all the time to set up your hourly rates, your um, laminate substrates, accessories, vendors, everything. You've got that set up. You're ready to rock and roll, ready to quote a sign. So basically, we come to the wide format calc here and we want to fill in all these green sections as needed. So the first one is a quote number. If you're not pulling a quote number from like a QuickBooks invoice or something like that, then one of the things you can do is just use the date. So 11, 29, 23. Uh, and then this is my first quote of the day. So that's how I'm going to set my quote numbers up. And that kind of helps me keep unique quote numbers for invoicing later. Uh, when I'm sending emails off, I try and reference that number. It just keeps everything tidy, right? And then we want to name the product graduation yard sign, for example, here. Um, I'm going to just make this shorter, grad yard sign, and doesn't matter. And you can see that the quote number is up here on the printable layout, and grad yard sign is right there. And then, of course, we also have the size and the pricing. So the size is set here, 18 by 24, and then we have the bleed and gutter. So this is the extra space around the sign that we need. If the, the ink is going to bleed off the edge and we want to cut that off, give us a full bleed, um, or... You know, uh, if you just want space between the boards for, for handling or, or cutting, you add that here. And this is going to add that all the way around. So this will actually make the, the, the material used 18 and a half by 24 and a half if we use a quarter inch bleed and gutter there. You may set this to zero and it will work just fine if you do that. So one of the things you can see is that if I add that bleed and gutter to 0.25 to an 18 by 24, uh, and I have 10, 10 18 by 24s typically fit on a 4 by 8. Um, sheet of corrugated plastic. But as soon as I add that bleed, I'm only going to get five. So the calculator recognizes that I'm only going to get five on that sheet. And it says two sheets of Coroplast, five prints per sheet. And then we actually have that $22 pricing uh, calculated as $11 per sheet. We have that $22 pricing calculated in there because it's using two sheets. If I remove the, the bleed, so let's say we have white borders or I'm going to undersize the signs a little bit when I cut them or whatever, the calculator recognizes we only need one sheet now because we can fit 10 18 by 24s on a single sheet of four millimeter four by eight coral. Okay, so you can see that that price reflects that. Okay, uh, double or single sided. Uh, of course, single sided is going to print single sided, double sided is printing double sided. So it's doubling the cost of ink. So if we go single sided here, you can see that ink cost and the, the print time goes down. Uh, if it's double sided, the ink cost and the print time goes up. That would also affect the laminate if we added a laminate. Um, choosing your material there and then the printer that we're running. If I change the printer, now this doesn't know the difference between a roll printer and a rigid printer. You have to make a good decision as to which printer you're printing this on. Um, and so uh, make sure to, to, you know, if you have multiple printers in your shop, make sure to select the correct printer. Many of you guys will only have one printer in your shop. You don't ever have to mess with this once you set the printer up. Uh, perhaps though, you will have different speed modes like we showed with the Canon Colorado in quality and production. And that will affect your pricing if you're saying that it can print faster or slower. And then at that point, you are trying to make a decision. Can I print this fast uh, to save time and money, maybe a little bit lower quality, or do I need to slow it down and print it in really high quality? Again, business decisions you have to make. One of the most challenging things that you have to decide from here is the input time or the time that you're going to take to set this job up and, and complete it and get it to your customer. So you want to think about all the billable time that you're going to take towards this job um, and include it here in minutes. So, you know, it's tough, but it, maybe a yard sign is only a 15 minute design time. Maybe you're looking at it and you talk to the client and you think you're going to have to spend 30 minutes laying out this sign because they want to add photos and they want some neat graphics in there. So you have to spend some more time on a yard sign or 60 minutes, whatever it is. And you can see everything is adjusting based on how much time I put in there. Install and delivery time. It's a yard sign in this case. There is none, but you may decide that you have four hours of install time. You could have travel time here. There's all kinds of things that you could add at this uh, cutting time, we've got 15 minutes of cutting time, I'm figuring. This kind of stuff just takes experience. Go in and, and you know, as you're doing these projects, it's it'd be prudent of you. It's important that you go in and you take the time to actually recognize how long stuff takes. So the first time you do a job, you know, you're going to bid it. You probably bid it wrong. That's okay. That's business. But write down how long it took you and start recording. Maybe create another uh, tab down here. I can just right click and click uh, um, 
sorry, I can go down here and hit the plus button and add a sheet. And then this sheet down here can be time tracking notes, right? And I just, you know, mention the job and how long it took and mention the job and how long it took. And that will take, um, it'll take you some time to build that out, but that'll help you start to understand uh, how long things take. And then you can bid stuff more accurately based on how long they should take. So cutting time, we're going to say 15 minutes, and then I can add accessories. So I'm not actually going to have any accessories other than the frames because this is a yard sign. And so uh, I have the frames, and then since we have 10 signs, we're going to need 10 frames. So I'm going to add that here. And you can see what that's done. We've got the accessory cost here, and then that included it increased our, our margin a little bit. Now let's talk about this before we get down into here and discounts and things like that. Let's talk about this donut chart for a minute. This donut chart is reflective of all the blue stuff is your costs, okay? The labor is kind of a soft cost, but then everything else here is a fairly hard cost that you want to make sure that you're maintaining, particularly your, your plastic and your accessory cost. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this, this profit, this yellow donut part, is the addition of all, see on the math tab here, which you don't ever have to come here if you don't want to, but on the math tab here, we're actually adding up all the profit for this job uh, across the, the additional markup on the printer, the additional markup on the material, the additional markup on the accessories, and the additional markup on your labor. And adding all that up, there's $79 and a penny profit here. Um, and so we can see that if we start adding a discount here, what it does is it just immediately cuts into profit. Of course, these costs don't go anywhere. They can't go anywhere. That's what it costs you to make this thing. So as I start to discount, we see what happens to our profit. And so you can see that disappearing pretty quickly. Even though I've got a 30% discount on the whole product, we're actually seeing a 66% discount in our profit in what's left over at the end of the month, right? So just this gives you a, a really good visual on what's happening to your profit margin as you apply even small discounts. It makes a big difference. So we did a 10% discount on the product, but we actually saw, you know, probably a 25% discount in our, our uh, profit margin here. So careful with that. Um, so I'll set that discount to zero. But well, let me set it to 10% because you can see then it's showing on the wide format calculator down here, the discount. And that's a total discount across everything. Um, and then uh, you, you just some artwork notes here, the graduation signs for BHS. You can see that those are here under design notes. Um, and then the accessories are added as line items here if there are any. Um, <clears throat> And then, of course, your billing information and the shipping or install address you might want to put there. You fill these out here. Do not come here and change these. It's best to just change it here so that you're really not making any changes. The goal is to not come here and make any changes on this once you set your company name and the basic information up here and then your, your terms down here. You should not have to change this. You just come here, save a PDF, or print it off. One last thing that I want to talk to you about in this video is the hourly rate that the job is is paying you. OK, so we talked about um, the hourly rate in another video that our shop base rate in this in this uh, fake shop here is sixty nine dollars an hour. So we know that if we bill at 13 hours a day at sixty nine dollars an hour, we're going to cover our monthly expenses of about seventy seven seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars. OK. And so that calculation is important. We want to make sure we're hitting that $69 an hour. Well, with all the other profit margins added to this product, we are seeing, uh, assuming that we have no waste, all right? We don't waste any ink. We don't waste any chloroplast, anything like that. Um, we're seeing that our value uh, per hour worked is $153.41. And that's really how businesses start to thrive. That's in in order to accomplish this, because you've got markup on everything as you're going along, and you should, um, you start to see this, that this job is going to earn you about $153.41 per hour. Now, that's going to help you start to pay those bills down. It's going to help to uh, you see a profit. But if we start discounting this out, you can see that is affected pretty heavily here. And then we get to a point where we start to discount, let's say I do a 50% discount on this, you know, it, it'd be easy because <clears throat> if we have 10 
let's say I do this here. So we, we have one board of corrugated plastic at $11 and we're looking at it and we're going to sell it at $70. Okay. In my mind, all right, I'm going to sell this one board of corrugated plastic for $70. I'm paid $11 for the board and I have maybe $20 in ink. So I'm at $31 and I'm thinking this is going to be great because I'm going to sell this job for $70. Okay. You can do that, but we're actually operating. If you start to calculate the print time, the cut time and the design time, we're actually operating at $33 and 73 cents per hour. So 33.73 per hour does not cover our monthly expenses. And so using a calculator like this, the, the key to it is to understand that we have to make $69 an hour to just, just break even. That's before any profit. That's just paying people for a little bit of their, their base wages and, and making our equipment payments and things like that. So in this scenario here, your math will be different. But we can look at this and, and this 50% discount really makes this look lucrative because it's, it's still $70 on an $11 board of Coro. But at the end of the day, making $33.73 an hour, it's just not going to cut it long term, right? Maybe you do a job here and there for somebody as a favor because they're doing big wraps with you that you're making $150 an hour on. But if you build your whole business selling sheets of Coro for $70 a sheet, um, at least this type of infrastructure that you might have is not sustainable in that way. So that's why small shops can get away with charging less. That's why business owners can get away with charging less. They may be okay. You know, they're working out of their home, things like that. Um, they may be okay with that. But as you scale, it becomes more and more important that you get closer and closer to that uh, base rate, which accounts for all of your expenses. So that was a lot of information to throw at you. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, leave a uh, uh, question down in the comments. Uh, we will answer them. I will answer them. Um, we would love to help you out in any way we can. I'm going to set this back to a reasonable. I don't like seeing no yellow on there. Um, thank you so much for watching. We're going to do some more follow-up videos, but this concludes the overall series on it. Uh, as I get questions, I'll make videos uh, that show those, uh, that answer those specific questions. Uh, the other thing that we will do over time is you will see us continuously work on this pricing calculator and the one you download might look slightly different. The concepts will be the same, but we'll be continuously making improvements to it over time. So you will see some uh, of those changes uh, take place, but generally you'll be able to, to work through what you need. And then just keep in mind that uh, there are a lot of notes in here that kind of explain what these uh, columns are for and what you should be doing with them. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is brought to you again by firesprint.com, a wholesale trade only printer. We would love to work with you. Check us out at firesprint.com.